Happy Easter, everyone! He is risen, he is risen indeed! Good morning and welcome to Pebble Creek Community Church on this glorious Easter Sunday. We are so glad that you've chosen to worship with us. May Jesus be honored and each of us be blessed by our worship service today. I want to welcome all the visitors to our Easter web service. It is so good to have you with us this morning. We hope you are drawn closer to Almighty God and experience His peace and life-changing love during our Easter worship service today. And we invite you to join us every week right here on the web. Please feel free to reach out to Pastor Bob with your questions and comments or just to introduce yourself. He always enjoys hearing from so many of you watching our services. You can use the Contact Us tab on the website toolbar to contact the pastor and give your feedback. By the way, have I mentioned the new website? To help you get acquainted with the new site, we've posted an article under What's Happening in Church News and FYI titled New Website is Launched. Check it out for highlights of features on the new site and where information is located. While on the website, explore all the tabs and the different articles and information available about our church. We hope you find our new website to be easy to use, informative, and useful. God's Word tells us to pray and let our request be made known to Him. There are many needs in our lives and in the world, and we are here to support you with a group of prayer warriors, or you can keep your needs private for the pastor only. Go to the tab on the homepage titled Prayer Request to submit yours to the team, or you can write that it is private a private request for the pastor only at the beginning, and it will be directed to him. Since this is the first Sunday of the month, the Education Committee has added a new book to the Bible <coughs> of the Bible to the Know Your Bible list. For April, the Know Your Bible book is the Book of James. More information is available on the website under Our Bible Studies and also in the announcements. Speaking of the first Sunday of the month, we will also be celebrating corporate communion together. Please plan to have your bread and juice ready if you desire to participate in the Lord's Supper later in the service. Be sure to listen to the one and a half minute devotionals, Words of Hope with Pastor Bob, which are available every Tuesday and Thursday on our website as an encouragement and support to build your faith. Since we don't have an actual offering time during our web services, it is important to take a minute and reflect on giving back a portion of God's blessings to support the church and the Lord's, Lord's work. Details on how you can give your tithes and offerings are listed on the homepage tabs under Giving and under Announcements. Finally, as we prepare to corporately worship Almighty God on this Resurrection Sunday, let's rejoice in the assurance of these words from Matthew 28, verses 5 and 6. But the angel said to the women, Do not be afraid, for I know that you seek Jesus who is crucified. He is not here, for he has risen as he said. To which we can also say, He is risen, He is risen indeed. As we move into the worship part of our service, please quiet your hearts and minds from the distractions of the world and prepare to worship our risen Lord as Karen plays the prelude, He is risen. <laughs>
Good morning on this glorious Easter Sunday. We start our celebration of the resurrection of our Lord as we sing together, Christ the Lord is risen today. Christ the Lord is risen today, Alleluia. Sons of men and angels say, Alleluia. Raise your joys and triumph song, Alleluia. Sing ye hands and earth reply. Lives again our glorious King, Alleluia. Where, O oh, death, is now thy sting, Alleluia. Dying words he all doth save, Alleluia. Where thy victory As we come to our time of communion, this is a, a, a real genuine opportunity for us to worship in this way. And especially here on Easter weekend, this is such a, a great opportunity for us to both celebrate the resurrection of the Messiah, but also to remember his death, his burial, and his resurrection through our uh, worship in communion. And it says that uh, in the night he was betrayed, Jesus took some bread. He took it in his hands and he looked at his disciples and he said, this is my body, which is broken for you. And as I've said often, without that sacrifice, without those broken bones, without the, the whole body being broken down, redemption would not have been possible. That was the point of the law. So as he took it, he tore it apart, and then he handed it out to his disciples. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for your son who came, your son who gave his life and his body to be beaten, to be broken down, to be that final sacrifice that we needed for us in order to live a redemptive life. Bless this, Lord. Thank you again. May we never take it for granted. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. And he took the bread, and he looked at them, and he said, Take this in remembrance of me. At the same time, he picked up a chalice, and he said, this cup and the wine in it represented his blood. 
And he poured some wine and he said, this is my blood that is being poured out for you. We are reminded throughout the scriptures that without the shedding of blood, there is no remission of sin. And so Jesus knew that even though his body was broken, his blood had to be shed. A sacrifice had to be made. And yet that blood is still being poured out for us today. Still being the redemptive quality that we need in order to live our lives the way they should be and to have a home in heaven that is promised to us. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for the blood of Jesus Christ, a voluntary sacrifice made on our behalf. Lord Jesus, help us never to take it for granted. Help us to always be the ones who are grateful for the sacrifice that he made. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. And he took the cup together and he said, Take ye and drink it all. As we continue with our worship service, let us never forget that this part is really the reason we get to join together. And now that we have received communion, let's join in singing in Christ alone. Our scripture 
Reading is from John 20, verses 1 through 18, and I'll be reading from the NIV translation. Early on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene went to the tomb and saw that the stone had been removed from the entrance. So she came running to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one Jesus loved, and said, They have taken the Lord out of the tomb, and we don't know where they have put him. So Peter and the other disciple started for the tomb. Both were running, but the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. He bent over and looked in at the strips of linen lying there, but did not go in. Then Simon Peter came along behind him and went straight into the tomb. He saw the strips of linen lying there, as well as the other cloth that had been wrapped around Jesus' head. The cloth was still lying in its place, separate from the linen. Finally, the other disciple, who had reached the tomb first, also went inside. He saw and believed. They still did not understand from scripture that Jesus had to rise from the dead. Then the disciples went back to where they were staying. Now, Mary stood outside the tomb crying. As she wept, she bent over to look into the tomb and saw two angels in white seated where Jesus' body had been, one at the head and the other at the foot. And they asked her, woman, why are you crying? They have taken my Lord away, she said, and I don't know where they have put him. At this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there, but she did not realize that it was Jesus. He asked her, woman, why are you crying? Who is it that you are looking for? Thinking he was the gardener, she said, sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have put him and I will get him. Jesus said to her, Mary, she turned toward him and cried out in Aramaic, Rabboni, which means teacher. Jesus said, do not hold on to me, for I have not yet ascended to the Father. Go instead to my brothers and tell them, I am ascending to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene went to the disciples with the news. I have seen the Lord. And she told them that he had said these things to her. May our Lord bless the reading of his word. Let's remember on this Easter day that because he lives, we can face tomorrow. Let's sing it together. Is worth a living just.
just because he lives. Welcome. I want to thank you for joining our broadcast this morning here on this wonderful Easter Sunday. What an opportunity for us to worship together and celebrate the resurrection of our Messiah. What a what an absolute joy this is. This is one of my favorite Sundays. It's it's a very holy Sunday as well for us to be able to celebrate the uh, completion of redemption. And uh, for that, we are very grateful. We are very blessed of all people. But as we come to this portion of our service now, we want to take some time and to pray Pray for our country. Pray for those who are in need of healing. We just want to remember these folks and try to remember as many as we can and, and that God knows who needs and uh, who is in need. So before we continue with our, our service, let's take some time and we'll go to the Lord in prayer. Father, we thank you for this day, this most wonderful, glorious day. Lord, we know that in this time, in this hour, as you had risen from the grave, we know, Lord Jesus, that you were completing what had to be done, completing something that now these 2,000 plus years later, we are still rejoicing. What a wonderful gift you gave us on that day. May we never, ever forget all that it took to provide a free gift to us. And Lord, this morning we want to bring to you all of the folks that we know that are in need of your healing touch. Lord, I think of Hal Merwall this morning, and I know he has a stint that's being put in this week, and we just pray that you would bless there. We pray that it would go well so that they can do the heart valve work they need to do. Strengthen him, be with Judy as well. For Dolores Whitworth, Lord, we know that she is struggling with pain and, and some things in her life there. Lord, I pray that the doctors would soon learn what to do and, and what treatments to, to give her to make this bearable and to possibly make it go away as well. Lord, for those who are still in recovery, we think of Larry Green that is, and his final treatments for Gary Trample and his ongoing um, treatments there for cancer, for Enid Harrison. Just pray that you would strengthen her, that she might be able to rise up and do what she wants to do. For Michael and Patricia Wilson, Lord, we thank you that for uh, the things that have gone well for them. We just pray that you would bless them, guide them, give them strength. For Jackie Atland and her fall, Lord, we ask that as she's in rehab, you would heal her, help her, strengthen her. For Inga Chapman as well, Lord, with other procedures coming up, we just pray that you'd give her comfort and strength and peace of mind and heart. Lord, for Beth Haddon, as she continues with uh, the issues in her life there, her health issues, we just pray that you would keep her comforted, give her peace, Lord, and strengthen her day by day. For Roberta Thompson and Kitty Datweiler, both, Lord, suffering and, and needing pain management, Lord, we just ask that you would bless there, guide there, give them peace of mind and heart that they would learn to trust and uh, in you and know that you have only their best interest at heart. Lord, we think of our missionaries this morning on this most glorious day. Lord, we ask that you'd bless them, strengthen them, give them wisdom, Lord, and creativity beyond what they even thought possible. Lord, we thank you for the good news that uh, comes out of Haiti this morning, that their revival services has seen another five people come to know you as Savior. What a wonderful thing that is. Lord, for our other missionaries around the world in Africa and South America, here in the U.S. and, and all over, bless them with wisdom. May they reach souls for you each and every day for our first responders, Lord, for our military and for our police, doctor and fire uh, personnel, emergency teams and nurses. Lord, all of these people have put their lives literally on the line for us. 
especially during this last year. And we just pray that you would give them uh, a mighty blessing because of it. Keep them safe. May they come home to their families to rejoice again. And for our country, Lord, we just continually pray for our leaders. Lord, we just ask that no matter what affiliation they have, may their first affiliation be with you. We pray that. I pray that all of us as believers would turn and face you and pray for our own lives, that we would get right, that you might heal our nation. Lord, for it is really our, us that you are looking for and looking to be leaders. Lord, help us to lead first in prayer. For the rest of our time together, Lord, may it be a blessing to have been here to hear your word. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Before our message, we have a video for you. It's a it's a uh, updated version of a of a great hymn called "Glorious Day" by Casting Crowns. We hope you enjoy it. May it speak to your heart. One day when heaven was filled with His praises. One day when sin was as black as could be Jesus came forth to be born of a virgin Dwelt among men, my example is He The Word became flesh and the light shined among us His glory revealed, living He loved me Dying, he saved me. Buried, he carried my sins far away. Rising, he just freely forever. One day he's coming. Oh, glorious day! Oh, glorious day! One day they led him up Calvary's mountain One day they nailed him to die on a tree Suffering anguish, despised and rejected Bearing our sins, my Redeemer is he the Hands that healed nations stretched out on a tree Took the nails for me Cause living he loved me Dying he saved me And buried he carried My sins far away Rising he justified Freely forever One day he's coming Oh glorious day Oh glorious day 
buried he carried my sins far away rising he just On this Easter morning, I was wanting us to talk about the resurrection, and I wanted to talk about all of the traditional aspects, but I wanted to do it a little bit differently, of course, and, and so today we're going to be looking at beginning at the end. This is such a familiar story for all of us in Christendom, whether whatever your faith tradition might be, whether it's Protestant or Catholic or, or what it might be, if it's Christian this is a very familiar story for all of us. Without this story, there would be no Christianity, if you think of it that way. It was because it's not the birth of Jesus that provided the redemption. I know I have heard that before. Someone had said something about, oh, when Jesus came at Christmas, he provided redemption. Well, it was coming, but that was not it. Because you see, that was the fulfillment of the coming Messiah, as we saw in Isaiah chapter 53 especially. And it was not the miracles or the teachings of Jesus that provided redemption. Really, that was the foundation of discipleship building because you see, what he told his disciples, what he taught his disciples was not the redemption, but really what to do after redemption. That was discipleship building. Dare we say that it was not even the death of Jesus that made all things new. And here's here's what one of the things I want you to get is because all religions have a leader who was born. That's true. All religions have a leader who died. That's true. But Jesus is the only one who actually rose from the dead. It was actually the resurrection conquering death not succumbing to it, that provides redemption. For it is Christ's victory over death that gives us the ability to overcome death as well. So you see, today we have to start at the end. So while the crowd, the religious leaders, and even the disciples looked at the crucifixion as an end, really, it was just the beginning. For Christ had to die before he could be raised. Think about that again. He had to die before he could be raised. And so therefore, in a real sense, the end truly is the beginning. But as Mary Magdalene walked toward the tomb on that day, it certainly, I am sure to her, felt like an end. Think of, think of her thought process at that point. The hope was extinguished. She had hoped that he was the Messiah. Deal with these nasty Romans. Take away all the cultural problems that they had. By this time, they'd had the Samaritan woman story and all of that. Well, now that hope seemed to be extinguished. The plans that they had made, all oh, oh, the plans. His kingdom was coming. His kingdom was here. And now it's ended. Jesus is no longer there. He's in the grave. Defeat, despair, deep grief, I'm sure, were mostly the feelings that she was feeling that morning. But by the end of the day, what a different story she was about to tell. You see, victory was about to be theirs, and they didn't even know it. Victory was right around the corner, but it was a blind corner. Victory was about to be the most glorious day, and they had no idea it was coming. 
So let's look at three steps in the progression to victory because you see that is what happened here. How beginning at the end can give us hope for the future. Beginning at the end gives us hope for the future. Point number one. These are going to be practical kind of points. The first point I have is traveling to the tomb. Any story of victory as believers has to start just where Mary did. It starts with a journey to the tomb. Don't we all know what that journey is like? Oh, man, it is as ancient as this first Easter and as contemporary as today. You see, this story is one about people who have come to the bottom of despair. There is virtually nothing left in them that will start them up again. But to start upward in Christ, we have to reach the end of ourselves. That's how it works. If I am sufficient in and of myself, what will I ever need Jesus Christ for? And that is the reality of hopelessness. We have to come to ourselves. And the reality of hopelessness is as close as this. It's as close as losing a loved one early. It is the heartache of a child gone astray. It is the feeling of not quite being good enough. And boy, I'm telling you, that one people still struggle with. I don't care if you're 15, 50, or 500. You still struggle with not being good enough. And some of us have been at one or two or all three of these points in our lives. And so you see, Mary had to come to the tomb. Mary's journey that day could be any of us, really, at any given moment in our lives. When we try to handle things on our own, you know, I often want to do that joke thing where somebody says, oh, no, I got this. And I always want to say, well, how's that working out for you? Because I will guarantee you 99 and 9 tenths times out of 100, it doesn't work at all. And dare I say virtually 100% of the time, it doesn't work at all. Why? Because I am not capable within myself. If Mary had been capable within herself, she would have skipped and hummed and whistled all the way to the tomb. Because she would know that Jesus was not going to be there. It's not what she did. All Mary could think about on her way to the tomb was that this was the end. This was the end. And she wanted to at least properly prepare the body of Jesus as a final act of a disappointing three years. All that they had built up, all the joy they had shared, all the travels they had done, the journeys they had gone on, the miracles she had seen, people's lives changed, all of that was done. There was nothing left for her. But she had to go to the tomb before she could start the journey upward. And so do we. The second point, the ray of hope. Uh, With any story that God gives us, there is always, always, always a ray of hope. He always gives that opportunity. So even as Mary arrived at the tomb, there was a ray of hope that she missed at first. And, and I'm, not, I'm not getting on her case. This is like so many of us on the same journey. We don't get it. We don't always see the signs. We don't always see the clues. We don't always see the pathway that God has laid out for us. Yet, God gives us hope even when all we can see is despair. You ever been there? This will never, ever get any better. Have you ever said that about anything in your life 
at any time. I think the older we get, the less often we say that because we have experience, as I call it, a spiritual resume. And I can pull out that piece of paper virtually, if you will, and you look at it and you say, oh, Lord, God saved me there. God rescued me here. Boy, he provided my need there. He was giving me hope here. I found comfort there. And on and on it goes. So the older we get, we know or should know that nothing is the end when Jesus is in the room. No, that sorry, it just isn't the end. Because Jesus is not about ending. He is about beginning. He is about hope. So what was Mary's ray of hope? Verse 1 of, of the chapter says this. Early on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene went to the tomb and saw that the stone had been removed from the entrance. Huh. Hmm. Do you see what she had for hope yet? It's the fact that the stone had been removed. The stone was not in front. The tomb was not sealed. The Roman seal had been broken. The stone had been rolled away. And Mary didn't get it. Now, I know that doesn't sound like much. But I want you to think about it. So this stone being rolled away. We'll get back to this in a minute. But... The stone being rolled away, I think apparently the way Mary took it, it could be interpreted in a couple of ways. First way was that somebody stole the body and left the stone away because they didn't want to take the effort and energy to roll it back. And they'd stolen the body and gone. Second way that could be interpreted was that Christ had risen. And I want you to note this because this is so important. It, Christ had risen was an option, but just like he said he was going to. How many times during this last week had Jesus told them from Palm Sunday to Easter, how many times had he said that he must suffer and that he would rise again in three days? I must suffer. I will rise again in three days. Hey, people. You listening to me? Apparently not. Because Mary opted for door number one. And often we do as well. We see despair and discouragement as an end in itself. And Jesus said, no, no, no. This is just the beginning. After all that she and the disciples had seen, they still did not grasp the truth. Look at verse 9. They still did not understand from Scripture that Jesus had to rise from the dead. Now, I want you to listen to that verse again. They still did not understand from Scripture that Jesus, what? Had to rise from the dead. Why did Jesus have to rise from the dead? I mean, he's God. He can do anything he wanted to. Because you see, it is not the death that covers sin. It was the conquering of death that covered sin. They still did not understand this. It just was something way beyond their comprehension. They had relegated the extraordinary to the ordinary. How often in our lives and in our times of doubt have we skipped over the promises of God. I will never leave you or forsake you. Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, today, and forever. I will provide all your needs according to his riches, it says in glory. I stand at the door and knock. Anyone who opens the door, I will come into him. And it says, it says, sup with him, I think in the King James, or eat with him. But the concept is, I will live with him. Forever. Promise after promise after promise after promise. And we skip over the promises to presume the worst. 
But what we should learn from this is just the opposite. You see, we need to search out the extraordinary in among the ordinary. You say, well, what do you mean? Well, like this, like love shared with the undeserved. That's an extraordinary, humanly kind function. Care given when inconvenient. Have you seen somebody in need, whether you're at a store or something, and and they just need help, and you're like, you're looking at your watch, and, oh, I got to run. You know, I don't know of any meeting, at least church-wide, that if you called and said, hey, I'm going to be late because I'm helping somebody. We're going to rejoice in that. How about this? Hope expressed where only despair is expected. Go and, and, and volunteer at like the New Life Center or Agua Fria Food Bank or, or St. Mary's Food Bank or any of these kind of places, Phoenix Rescue Mission. Go and talk with these people. Bring encouragement to them. How about joy and peace in the middle of grief? Sometimes you don't even have to say a thing. You just have to be there. So we as believers should see this. This is something that should not pass us by. And we should be the ones pointing it out to others. Hey, here's an opportunity. Well, our third point is exactly the title, beginning at the end. Starting in verse 10, it says, Then the disciples went back to where they were staying. Now Mary stood outside the tomb crying. As she wept, she bent over to look in the tomb and saw two angels in white seated where Jesus' body had been, one at the head and the other at the foot. So we see here Mary really at what she believes is the end of all their dreams, not just her dreams, all of the disciples' dreams, says she was crying. And if you think it was just (laughs) a little sniffle, (laughs) oh, I don't think, I think it was much more than a soft little sniffle. I think these were body-racking sobs on her behalf. I'll, I'll defend her. She was at a point where all of her life that she had seen hope was now dashed. How special was Jesus to her, you ask? Well, he cast out seven demons from her. That's a good start. She had served at Jesus' feet for the next three years. She had, quote, bought into the idea of a conquering Messiah though, and not the peace spreading Jesus. All the religious leaders of that day kept telling people, oh, the Messiah is coming and he's coming on a white steed and it's going to be a sword and he's going to kill all those nasty Romans. And she thought that too, I'm sure. But here she is at the end of it all. And she is at the end of all she can figure out. But it's all of the end that she can figure out. It is only when she comes to her end. I don't want to call it the end. I want to call it when it when she comes to her end, because this is a very personal thing, and I want to I want you to remember we all have to come to our own end. But it is when she comes to her end that God can begin a work in her and through her. For as long as she still thinks she can figure out how to fix this, there is no room for the miraculous workings of God. And that is what we need to understand today. If I can do it, what do I need God for? And God will let us come to a point where there is no other option. What a wonderful place that is to be. Mary, though, she's still concerned with a dead body. Starting in verse 13, it says, they asked her, the angels, this is the angels, they asked her, woman, why are you crying? And she says, they have taken my Lord away, she said, 
and I don't know where they have put him. At this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there, but she did not realize it was Jesus. He asked her, woman, why are you crying? Who is it you are looking for? And in that moment, Mary says, "Ah, it's you. She is only looking at what her earthly understanding tells her. How often do we do the same thing? Here's what she saw. This is this was her earthly understanding. The tomb is open. The body is gone. Therefore, someone must have taken it. Really? You see how her assumption takes her down a different road than Jesus ever intended for her to go. She is so grief-stricken that she does not even recognize the angels or Jesus himself. And she had walked with him for three years. Only when Jesus speaks to her directly does she hear and ultimately see Jesus. I think too often we are so far down that we don't immediately hear the voice of God either. So you can't get on her case too much because I think we end up being in that situation as well. But in the end, she finally sees the situation for what it is. Jesus has risen. Jesus is alive. Jesus is standing in front of her. In fact, verse 18 says this, Mary Magdalene went to the disciples with the news. I have seen the Lord. And she told them, that he had said these things to her. She goes and tells others as well. Boy, if that is not the foundation for evangelism, I do not know what it is. She recognizes Jesus as her savior. She goes and tells the others as well. It's not hard. And what she thought was an end, really was convinced was an end, truly became her beginning. On this day, especially, we also need to be reminded that Christ's death was not an end for us. It's not a new, an end for anybody. Despair is not an end. Despair is the point at which you can start again. It is a New beginning. It is a new start. It is a place to build from and go forward. Maybe you're watching this this morning and are thinking you cannot start over. I'm too old. I'm too young. I'm too this. I'm too that. I've done so much. I haven't done so much. Of that. Stop. Maybe you think you can't start over. But I'm here to tell you that no matter where you are, even if you think you're at the end, it can be the place of beginning you are desperately looking for. Christ's resurrection offers new life and new beginnings. Let me encourage us all to grab hold of that and start again. Whether you've been a believer and have kind of fallen away, you can start again. Whether you've never given your life to Jesus Christ, you can start anew. This time, you can start, though, with God's power behind you. Never forget, the beginning is found at the end. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, we thank you for your tomb. We thank you that that tomb is empty. We thank you that that resurrection provided new life for all those who choose it. Help us to choose it, Lord. Help us to choose what we need. Help us to be the people that you need us to be. And as you're watching this this morning, I want to give you that opportunity. I know holidays can be hard for people. Maybe you're thinking that this is a place in which you've come, maybe even watching this by accident. But you can start over. 
You can start anew. Jesus Christ said, I am here. I am knocking on the door of your heart. Just open. Just open and I will come in and live with you. If you know you need Jesus Christ this morning, you know that that's your only hope. Pray with me this morning. Lord Jesus, I thank you for the forgiveness of my sins. I thank you that you have become my Savior, my Redeemer, and my Lord. Help me to be that person who begins at the end. Help me to walk that spiritual journey that honors you in every way that I possibly can until I see you face to face. If you prayed that prayer, go to our website. Please contact us. We want to talk to you. We want to share some things with you. And Father, as we come now, Lord, help us all. Even those of us who have been believers for a long time, help us to remember remember that we too can do better. Help us to start anew each day. Your mercies are new every morning. Help us to be there and be aware of what can happen. Lord, we thank you for your word. We thank you for all that it says to us. Help us to be those people you need us to be. We'll pray and thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you for being part of our broadcast. May God bless you, and we'll see you next Sunday. And now as we prepare to finish our Easter celebration today, let's join together in singing praise to the Lord the Almighty. May the joy of this Easter be in our hearts always. God bless you.
Now unto him who is able to keep us from falling, and to present us faultless before his presence with exceeding joy, to the only wise God, both now and forevermore. Amen.